Now, Buddhism, uniquely amongst the world's major religions, locates suffering and overcoming suffering at the absolute heart of our mission here on Earth. And clearly, I would wholeheartedly endorse this. Um, however, number of qualifications. Buddhists locate desire uh, as at the root of suffering. And though unfulfilled, frustrated desire most certainly can cause suffering, uh, a world in which all desire has been extinguished is a world in which essentially there is no longer progress, intellectual achievement, arguably even no longer uh, ethical responsibility. And if, for example, no one is motivated to uh, bring up children because they don't have any desire for offspring, then, well, there's likely to be strong selection pressure against uh, any genetic predisposition to this effect. So, one reservation then about uh, Buddhism is that it doesn't seem to be possible to have an advanced civilization, certainly an advanced civilization that is continuing to develop if we extinguish all desire. Um, and I think it is, is worth noting that today the very happiest people will also tend to have the strongest desires and be most motivated. Uh, that the people who have fewest desires and the least intense desires, in many cases are the depressives. Um, so there is no necessary connection, I would argue, between uh, desire and suffering that the uh, the new opioidergic axis that mediates hedonic tone and the mesolimbic dopamine system that, crudely speaking, mediates desire. Uh, they are, yes, closely uh, interconnected in the mind-brain, but nonetheless one can strengthen or, or weaken one axis uh, quite independently of the other. So that's perhaps one difference of emphasis between traditional Buddhism and the biotech approach I would canvas. Um, other differences, um, yes, the Noble Eightfold Path and Buddhist meditational disciplines, unfortunately, though they can be useful as palliatives for some people, they don't recalibrate the hedonic treadmill. Indeed, if someone is a melancholic depressive, in many cases, meditation will actually, anything, make melancholic depression worse. So they're not a panacea. Uh, and, of course, if one has a genetic tendency to uh, depression, one is like the other things be equal to pass this on to one's offspring and the cycle will continue. Um, one further uh, problem with the Noble Eightfold Path and the Buddhist approach is that it doesn't seem feasible uh, to dismantle uh, the food chain by means of these uh, meditational disciplines uh, and if we want to phase out suffering throughout the living world it's going to be necessary to uh, to employ highly technical means what one might call high-tech Jainism if you like involving fertility control uh, surveillance micromanagement a whole host of extremely uh, technical uh, uh, measures so, uh, unfortunately, it's not enough merely to have the right uh, cast of mind, uh, ethical behaviour. We really need to employ high technology too. What is it? Uh, Gibbon said that human sympathy is cold to the relation of distant miseries. That one can read about uh, terrible things that happened in previous centuries or millennia, or for that matter, the possibility that terrible things will happen centuries and millennia in future. And in some sense, they're less real, less important. Uh, and however humanly tempting uh, this cast of mind is, uh, I think ethically it is potentially disastrous that some, but not all, but some of the technologies we're discussing now seem unlikely to benefit, for example, someone over the age of 50. And so older readers, uh, uh, older listeners, I can understand why many will, in some sense, switch off if one is talking about uh, technologies and events that are going to be happening, unfolding uh, later this century and beyond. But insofar as we aspire to be ethical agents, I think we do have a responsibility to consider the long-term future of sentient life in the universe, starting with our own planet, uh, and so in that sense, 
Uh, yes, uh, the past 540 million years since the Cambrian explosion have been have witnessed quite extraordinary hor extraordinary horrors, and realistically, there are still going to be horror. There are still going to be horrible things happening in the world for the next one, two, possibly three centuries, depending on whether there is a uh, a shift in ethic and uh, an ideology. But I, th I just think, unfortunately, one has to accept that full-blown paradise engineering is unlikely to happen in one's own lifetime, but it's our responsibility to to lay the pre preconditions uh, for uh, a future in which there is no involuntary suffering. Yeah, so it's something like uh, in vitro meat. Uh, certainly, if anyone who has expertise in expertise in tissue biology, strenuously urge them to consider uh, a, a, a career in, in in vitro meat. But above all, I think the problem is ethical, ideological uh, conservatism and status quo bias. And in many cases, the best way uh, the most effective use of one's time and energies, I think, is actually uh, converting others to this, what many people still find, a completely alien perspective. The idea that uh, suffering of any kind is shortly going to become optional and whether we should uh, seek to preserve preserve it at all. No, it, it, it will sometimes be said that isn't masochism a refutation of psychological hedonism, um, and without wanting to get involved in a discussion of psychological hedonism, the idea that humans, and for that matter all sentient beings, are animated by the uh, pursuit of happiness and shunning uh, ill-being. No, a, a, a masochist is not a refutation. Uh, unlike, inverted commas, normal people or neurotypicals, and I'm not using these terms in, you know, not deliberately anyway, in a, a, a pejorative uh, uh, sense, uh, the masochist in certain situations involving ritualized submission uh, 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 will, exp will experience the release of endogenous opioids, and these endogenous opioids are intensely rewarding. Uh, stimuli that in neurotypicals would be associated with, with pain and even uh, uh, suffering, humiliation, uh, for, the, for the masochist are not experienced in the same way in virtue of these extraordinarily intensely rewarding endogenous opioids released. Uh, a masochist can uh, hate catching his or her hand in the door as, as much as you, you or me. Um, so, no, uh, masochism is a complication, it's not a, a refutation. An analogy might be uh, something like uh, a bittersweet nostalgia, uh, or music that is happy, happy, sad. It's 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 not uh, 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 sad music. Isn't uh, uh, completely disagreeable. On the contrary, uh, uh, it can actually be quite enjoyable. Uh, humans have these composite states of mind. Um, in future, will we want to preserve these composite states? Uh, my own inclination would be uh, that. I would rather have states of unalloyed bliss than a combination of, of the nice and nasty. But once again, this is, this is optional. If a state of mind is, is on balance positive, uh, I wouldn't necessarily wish to persuade anyone uh, uh, to give it up. But yes, I think a lot of people who aren't masochists misunderstand uh, what masochism is all about. I think a lot of people uh, assume that pleasure and pain in some sense are largely or wholly relative and that if we were notionally to uh, live in a world uh, which we were all animated by gradients of well-being, wouldn't the dips somehow be unpleasant? Um, and clearly dips are can be functionally analogous to unpleasant experiences as they exist today. But one only needs to consider people today who endure chronic depression or, or chronic pain. It would be cruel in the extreme to tell them that, yeah, essentially they can't really be depressed because they are chronically unhappy. Uh, sadly, uh, yes, they are. They really are chronically miserable. And likewise, in future, although one can preserve the functional analogues of 
uh, disappointment or anxiety or depressive realism. If our hedonic ceiling is far higher today than today, if we have edited out the molecular uh, signature of, of, of boredom or any form of experience below hedonic zero, then yeah, it's, it's essentially suffering or unpleasant experience is physically impossible. Of course, if it if contrary to everything I've been saying, some kind of contrast effect really were essential uh, to appreciating the good things in life, then it would be possible to implant false memories. But I don't see any evidence that uh, this is the case and that uh, memories, if anything, would uh, uh, tarnish uh, post-human utopia. So uh, I, I don't find this a very uh, a fruitful line of thought, but technically it's feasible. Uh, I have had over the years a number of spirited discussions with Christians, not just uh, Christian denominations, uh, uh, Buddhists and, and Muslims. Um, generally, I don't think it's fruitful to engage in theological discussion, certainly not about the existence of God. But I think if one belongs to a religion that subscribes to a belief in God, the all-merciful, the all-compassionate, then given that mere mortals can, can envisage the well-being of all sentience, it seems almost blasphemous to suggest that God is more uh, narrow, more stunted in the depth and range of his compassion. Um, I think, too, if one looks at the Bible, for example, uh, one finds how uh, in future the lion will die down with the lamb, one can cite Isaiah, he who slayeth an ox is, this, is as if he slayeth a man. There are uh, biblical passages, if, if you like, that certainly lend themselves to some form of, of paradise engineering. And certainly there is no but biblical prescription against using pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or uh, re-engineering the global ecosystem or our wildlife parks to phase out predation. Yet yeah, there is that there is nothing uh, to be found in the Bible or the Quran that prevents us uh, phasing out experience below hedonic zero. So uh, a, a religious believer who uh, attacks uh, HI or the uh, the abolitionist project, I don't think they should wrap themselves in the mantle of of of, of orthodoxy. Uh, in that the state is, that the sacred texts uh, do not do not speak about these possibilities at all.